Hey everyone, welcome to the Untitled Podcast where we cover interesting web technologies and talk about real interesting communities on the web. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about some about the View Storefront community, which we've been a part of recently, and specifically we'll be covering the Capybara and Storefront UI projects. So in the first half of this episode, we'll be covering some work ar- around we have been con- contributing back to the community. Uh, they include some changes to Mega Menu, Navbar, and uh, searching experience. Uh, after that, we'll go into CSS Grid. C- uh, CSS Grid is a great technology that makes uh, it's really easy to design UI components in the layout of the web. So first, we'll see the Mega Menu and its contribu- uh, our contribution. So the Mega Menu in uh, Capybara theme is uh, broken on mobile device. Uh, as uh, if we go to capybara.storefrontcloud.io we can see that uh, the menu in uh, the mobile if we see the menu here the tiles in the menu are broken so we try to fix that uh, the aside menu class are you on the side menu class oh. uh, so if we just add a flex wrap and tell it to wrap around so uh, uh, now we can see that uh, the tiles are little broader and actually looking nice here so now if we just uh, change the justify content to stress uh, stretch and uh, we can see there's some uh, width uh, problem with the style can we go to the section yeah so in this they have uh, restricted the banner width so and now we just need to add a little margin bottom these last two changes are for mobile only so the main changes we made around on this item are the way we flex the content around here so before it was designed only to cater to the desktop menu where you have the tiles side by side versus on a mobile view you want them to be vertically aligned so that they take up more of the real estate. So to get that to work we allowed the flex container to start wrapping on itself so that the blocks take up more of their own space and after that we realized that it would look nicer if the tiles would actually take up the entire width that they were given on mobile because mobile devices aren't that thick to begin with and so we thought it was appropriate to let these tiles grow with the size of the container until they hit the, de- the desktop view. Otherwise, we'd, we could have, instead, if we didn't want to override the width, what we could have done is given this justify content center and let the width remain. And that would have given us the same size tiles, just center aligned right here. And uh, we have uh, created a pull request to the Capybara community in GitHub. This is the PR and we can see the changes that we made in the file. I guess one thing that's important to see here is when we wrote justify stretch, we made sure to only keep it for a mobile first and the space between was important for desktop because that allowed there to be space between the tiles without giving them specific margins. Instead, they would just distribute the space the the way that we wanted them to without any custom work. So we just uh, wrote that in here as desktop only. And same thing down here, I'm sure you can mention the width is now moved to desktop only. Yes, uh, because we want to keep uh, that uh, overridden variable for the desktop. So we just uh, moved it to the desktop only segment. After this, we have the category navbar page. Right away, um, what we were trying to do here is make the way the spacing works in this whole section a bit more efficient. And as you can see right now, this is starting to collapse when there's still a lot of space left right here. And this is also starting to roll up. And what, we, and what it only gets worse, I guess, when we start adding filters. So say if we add a filter and hit done. As you can see, this whole thing starts to overflow all the way out of the page and because and because of that the a mobile user's view starts scrolling left and right so to fix this one of the key things that we did was we decided that since there's a clear all button in the side menu uh, step one was to just clear out things that we thought we didn't need on mobile so we got rid of the clear all button right on the 
the main nav bar so we got rid of that and so all already you can see that it's all starting to come together a little bit more nicely you don't mm -hmm. have to use as much space as before so the next thing we want to take care of there's is that because we've written the spacing between these components using margin and padding it doesn't recognize that there's a lot of empty space left over that it can use on the mobile view and so to fix that, what we're going to do is find a way to space these elements without using fixed spacing, like margin and padding. So the first step we're going to do is go through all of these and just take out all the padding that we've written outside of storefront UI. Anything that's written in storefront UI, we're not trying to remove. The next step is to go to the parent of this, and we can use a layout tool called CSS Grid. And so the way we'd use it here is we write a grid template columns, and we can define, since we have three elements in the nav bar now, we can just in writing define how many columns we want. So what we're gonna do is start with giving them all equal spaces. So what that's gonna let us do is keep the middle content centered and the content on the left and right to their according ends. So we're gonna start with is just write one FR space, one FR space, one FR. So now we have our three columns. And what we'll do next is go to all of our children element and tell them what column they're part of. So we're going to tell them, I think we just do grid column and we can just tell this one to be one. After that, we can go to the next one, which is the middle button, and we can tell this to be grid two. And so right here, what we're doing is we're just telling all of the pieces which column they should be in. And once they get into their columns, they're going to be spaced out nicely because grid's just going to take care of that for us with the template that we wrote. SFUI oh, okay. I see. We put the grid in the parent of the parent. That's the problem. So we can just get rid of that and go down one layer, go into navbar main instead of the whole navbar. <laughs> <laughs> so step one of writing a grid is you have to write display grid or nothing's going to happen. And boom, voila. Everything's working. And so now what we have here is something that lets us um, scale our window nicely without um, anything flowing off of the page. And so here we go. And so now what's nice about this layout is that the latest piece stays in the middle all the time. So here, even if we make this quite a bit longer, it kind of stays the way it is. So if you wanted to take this one step further, what you could do is in your grid template up over here, um, instead of making these all 1FR, 1FR, you could change this to um, min max. And so it'll what we can do is give it auto and max content. And so these two properties are telling, auto is telling it to resize to give everybody else the space they need and max content is telling it to be as wide as it needs to be to be its full width and nothing more. And min max just picks the, what does it pick? Uh, it picks uh, when it uh, needs to be minimum and when it needs to be maximum. So if filters were to all of a sudden be a lot more text. You can see that it still doesn't break the layout because everything is wrapping. And that's why we decided to use CSS grid inside of the nav bar instead of using the flex layout. Oh, another thing that we haven't talked about is using column gap, grid column yes. gap. So on desktop, the items need to be spaced between, need to have space between each other. So what we ended up doing was giving then column gaps instead of writing margins and paddings. And for desktop, since we wanted the first two items to be aligned to the left and the last one to be to the right, what we told the layout to do is make the first ones only as wide as the content itself. And the last one just takes up all the remaining space. And we, that's how we were able to split up the space between all three items. And so just writing by writing two different uh, templates right here, I think it's like a total of four lines of CSS, we're able to um, write a much more robust layout for desktop and mobile nav bars. Okay, uh, I I need to add uh, one thing here. Uh, instead, of, instead of removing the clear button and uh, all the extra things which we have in desktop, mm. uh, I think we can use small icons for them in the mobile view. Like for clear all, clear all we can use the cross icon. Cross icon. And for the uh, sort by fill, uh, label which we removed, Yes. We can use some icon for sorting there. Oh, so the two mm. arrows? Yeah. The two arrows, yeah. <coughs> yeah. That can be a very nice improvement mm. for the mobile UI. Yeah. Now if we look to the home page, uh, there are some extra padding which is making this uh, carousal uh, look shrink. 
so we just remove the overriding padding left and padding right variables which were variable spacer XL. What's really great about this is that this padding was already mobile only on desktop, it's already zero. So we were actually able to get rid of the desktop only rule to zero out the padding too, because we got rid of this. Uh, this was a pretty easy choice too, because on mobile, on the product view, there's already no padding. So yeah. it was actually a more consistency change too that helped us make that decision to just get rid of the padding on the home page. Mohamed, is there any other interesting things about capybara that you want to talk about before we move on actually uh, i do want to add some uh, features on our, around wish list mm -hmm. so i'm i'm actually i'm working on that uh, wish list is actually deactivated from the capybara theme mm -hmm. so we are actually working on uh, add adding those wish list pages again into into the capybara wow so capybara, capybara user will have a new feature of yeah. adding wish list yeah nice. using wish so i'm working nice. on that so on a, so it will be a, a whole separate uh, i guess i'll make a whole separate video for that for the second part of this podcast we want to talk about um some of the work we did for not some of the work uh css grid in more detail we kind of brushed over it earlier when we were talking about the nav bar but mm -hmm. css grid is something we've um started using recently only in the nav bar so far but we are excited to use it in more places too because of how interesting it is people don't realize css grid isn't just the old bootstrap grid but actually css grid is completely different and i think ashwarya you can give your own s statement of how awesome it's been so uh, we have you uh, basically i've started using css grid uh, um, basic css properties and i've discovered that uh, in the grid we have uh, much flexibility to use how much columns do we need or how much rows do we need we can just uh, exactly say that this is how you need to look uh, in the and the flexbox is kind of uh, more uh, a free approach flexbox is kind of 1D segment there you just put the, the things and it uh, go down with the layout but in the grid we can just say that this is the header or this is this thing and we can tell the item to stay there. That's a really good point about how you mentioned this is Flexbox is very one dimensional so you're either going in a list or you're going across that's it. CSS grid is very two or even sometimes three dimensional <laughs> with how you want to play content. Sure, you can add to this in moment. Uh, I guess how, how much? What's your experience with CSS Grid so far? Have you? Uh, no, I haven't had uh, much experience with CSS Grid. Mm -hmm. uh, I have so, uh, some some experience with the Bootstrap Grid actually. Mm -hmm. But yeah, from this I can I can definitely say that CSS Grid is better than what I have used in Bootstrap because Bootstrap yeah. only gives you twelve columns and in one row. I think definitely. Let's just right off the bat. Let's separate flex. Uh, Flexbox and CSS Grid. They're not exactly the same thing, even though you can use them both for, you can do a lot of stuff with CSS Grid that you can only do, that you can do with Flexbox, but it doesn't always go the other mm -hmm. way around. Flexbox is great if you wanna, if you're talking in con in the context of one element, kind of, if it's like one list or one. Yeah, and more uh, loosened list of things, like uh, some random things to be placing in the layout. Uh, but uh, the grid uh, gave us a firm grip over the layout and the elements. One thing that you mentioned is Flexbox is more flexible. You said you can; it's more like you can do whatever. I actually disagree. I think Flexbox is much more like you're either putting it in or you're either making a row that's wrapping and making a grid yeah, out so of it. So the flexibility is to the layout itself. It's not for the developer. <laughs> <laughs> Where CSS Grid really shines is when you're making larger pieces, it's just non-traditional layouts where it's mm -hmm. not symmetrical, it's not just rows or anything. Mm -hmm. So where you really want to get creative and also really great when you're trying to adapt layouts for mobile and desktop. Mm -hmm. And you don't want just the traditional you have 12 columns, make it eight columns, or oh, sorry, nine columns and six, then four yeah. and whatever. Like, and you're just doing simple wrapping. That's just, when you want to go beyond that, that's when grid gets really good. Mm. I would say that uh, the, uh, wherever we have uh, some complex uh, structure, so in those complex structure, we can use the grid thing. That is easy to use and easy to say that what things should, uh, where those elements should align. And uh, in whenever we have some simple kind of uh, layout where things should be just go easy, and then in those scenarios, flexbox are pretty easier and good to use. I'd say nobody should ever use 12 column grid. <laughs> Agree? 
yeah uh, so i was just uh, wondering around how uh, the bootstrap grid works uh, i feel that internally it should be uh, using the same thing which uh, the css grid gives us to us mm-hmm. like in bootstrap you specify in the html that you want how much in in one row how much column you want and how how you want to structureize your your uh, template so uh, in in a way i feel that both are same just the this just the way of writing how you want to uh, structureize your column is different in this you use the st- uh, you use the css to uh, make your columns and uh, make your columns in the grids and in the bootstrap grid you use uh, the bootstrap classes to make your uh, structure and we can use both the things in all the scenarios okay. what do you say for me it started with the bootstrap the designing and the layout for for me the basic thing was uh, the that we have bootstrap and we write things like here and then i got access to the flexbox thing so in the flexbox uh, things are means basically we were doing the same thing and it was pretty easier to do it in and now when we when i see the grid layout mo- module and these grid thing and now i can see uh, see that uh, in the bootstrap we were doing this very similar thing like uh, we can do it in grid but it was uh, definitely easier to do it in bootstrap because they were giving us the library and we just need to write the classes and those, all those things but uh, now uh, in the grid we can uh, really uh, yeah uh, th- that's one point you can be we, you can be uh, much more creative in this yes, because be you have freedom to use mm. all the css you want yes. yeah in bootstrap you just have the specified classes and uh, through that classes only you can I design your layout. layout yeah but yeah still uh, it's uh, for me since i have worked a lot on bootstrap mm. it's much easier to me to design my layout through the classes Definitely. which i know opinions aside i think uh, what you said is underneath it's the same thing the reason i don't think it's the same thing is bootstrap grid has been around for 15 years Yeah, yeah. Uh, the 12 column grid. grid. Yes. Mm-hmm. Grid I don't know maybe it's been much. How much? Uh, maybe 10 years. 10 years? Ah, I don't know much, but yeah, it should be at least 10 years. Yeah, so I'm, I we can Google it once, but I'm pretty sure CSS grid came out like 3 or 4 years ago. Okay. Uh, yeah, launch of CSS grid back in 2018 October. Oh. So it's very new. Maybe. So unless Bootstrap has changed a lot since I last looked at it. <laughs> I don't which it doesn't often. So core level of difference is that main thing I think where the flexibility that you really get is definitely if you want to just like have like a uh, 30 70 panel on your bootstrap layout it's pretty easy you give like a certain amount of columns over here over here mm-hmm. but when you for example want to make something like this yeah it pretty much can't happen yeah. and even in the example that we saw today about the nav bar what was interesting is on bootstrap if you want to set a column width using the content inside of it. I don't think you can do that. Can you? Cuz you have to give it a number of columns. You can't just tell it to be the size of the piece. Yeah. So that's like game changer to me <laughs> is you can just tell it to be the size of the thing. <laughs> But you can uh, you can definitely uh, definitely achieve it through uh, how much columns you want, right? Like if yeah. you want certain size and then you define that much column for that The thing piece. here is the amount of content inside of that piece can be whatever. And but if I only give it four columns because this is how much content I have right now and then that say three days from now I want to change the amount of content, I have to make sure four columns is still good enough. Versus this it's just it's going to work. And the other thing that I really like about it is how you can arrange items. So I guess you can do this with a div as you give it like two columns and you tell it the content inside of it to go somewhere else. But it's just much smoother here. You can just tell it to justify that way, just to find this way, just to find the middle. And up down every way you want. Also if we uh, want to achieve such uh, layout uh, in bootstrap, then a lot of nested columns will be required yeah. to achieve this thing. but and uh, in the grid layout we i don't think uh, we need any kind of nesting things these are just element placed there so like one thing is like when we're making a grid in bootstrap grid is we have to write the breakpoints we want for every yes. new version of the list mm-hmm. with the grid uh, we there's this thing called column auto repeat and you can give it a min max of this is the smallest a column can be this is the most it can be and it just adds more columns as you make the page bigger and it reduces them as you make them smaller 
And so it's just right. one line versus like mm. seven media queries. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, so yeah. And I think we can just skip to like, we've already seen a bit of templates. I think we can skip to grid areas, which is like the most insane thing to me. Ashwari, do you want to introduce this concept? Uh, this, is li this is like uh, hard coding elements to their uh, places. This is like drawing basically in CSS. <laughs> this is like you've been given a pencil and you can write the layout you want. Basically, uh, yeah, very correctly said that uh, you just map the things where these things want to go uh, in the layout and how you want to put those things. So like here, this is like, this is how you can write a layout. This is insane. One-to-one <laughs> -one mapping? Yeah, and so it's like, all right, I have, a, what is this, a six column layout. This could be any columns I want. And I can make the whole top of my header in the middle, I can divide it without thinking about what the fractions are or how many columns there are. Mm -hmm. I can just write two, six, or two, four, and then the rest is footer. So this thing is, and then what you can do is you write this, and then you know how we wrote the template columns? Mm -hmm. You can write that too. So what you can do is you can say, hey, I want the me main, the menu part to be one fraction of the thing. So it's even though it's one column, it's one fraction, mm -hmm. so the other things auto size automatically. So you can assign areas and you can change the area size, which is just never yeah. seen before. Mm. Right. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, yes. So this is CSS Grid and it literally takes every reason away to start with Bootstrap for anything at all other than the UI kit. Also, uh, making some changes in the layout is also very easy. We just need to do it in two uh, parts. Just. Uh, define those elements, new, newer elements, and we no, don't need to rewrite the layout for any new thing. Yeah, that's a great thing about this is you can write as many of these as you want, mm -hmm. and you can arrange the content in as many ways as you want. Yeah. So before, either you write media queries and then you write different kinds of, C you still have to write media query, but you have to change the way your columns are divided, or you just write a whole different template. Either way, it's not fun. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that you can just do this, and so that doesn't mean that your content has to collapse linearly. Mm -hmm. You can have your header be right here, and then if on my mobile layout, for some reason, I can just have the header be in the middle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just do whatever. <laughs> so that's CSS Grid. And I think that wraps it up for all the topics we wanted to cover in our podcast today. Yes. Um, any last thoughts before we close out? Great session. <laughs> Great session. Great session.